guys! Today I'm going to review the organization. Sidney Poitier tackles the organization. He's out to get the men who run everything. The organization came out in 1971 and is an American crime thriller. It's the third and last of the trilogy of films to star Sidney Poitier as Lieutenant Virgil Tibbs. The first was the classic In the Heat of the Night from 1967. This was followed by the Call Me Mr. Tibbs in 1970 and then this film The Organization in 1971. The Organization was directed by Don Medford. It was written by James R. Webb based on the characters by John Ball. Music was by Gil Mel. The film runs 106 minutes. The film received poor reviews by critics. However, it got the number one spot at the US box office on its opening week. The film stars Sidney Poitier as Virgil Tibbs, Barbara McNair as Valerie Tibbs, Gerald S. O'Loughlin as Lieutenant Pecora. So this film is about a group of vigilantes in a bid to keep drugs off the street, a group steals a large cashier of heroin from a cartel's den. Police Lieutenant Tibbs is willing to help but a false murder charge poses a bigger problem. So this group of vigilantes, they've got a grudge against this cartel because members of the family or friends have died through drugs. Really interesting opening to the film. There's no dialogue. The first line of dialogue only occurs 8 minutes into the film. The second 6 minutes later when the heist is over. Apart from that one line, the entire heist is done without any dialogue at all. And this film has plenty of action. It's surprising. Eh? Bloody action? What bloody action? I fell the bloody sleep halfway through the bugger. I wasn't expecting much because of the bad reviews, but um, I was surprised by how piercy it is. After the previous film, which was more slow paced, and it had a TV movie look, uh, this is actually a, a bit more faster moving. There seems to be a little bit more money spent on it as well. There's good location footage of San Francisco. There's some good car chases. And the final act has a good long chase down these tunnels. Sidney Poitier's on form as no-nonsense Virgil Tibbs. And he actually helps the vigilante group in this movie. Barbara McNay is back as Virgil Tibbs' wife, and that's good continuity with the previous film. And also his son's back in this film as well. And I like the scenes where you see his family life, as well as being a tough cop. There's a funny bit where his son's been um, doing sex education and he says he, he knows everything. <laughs> I mean, any of it you didn't already know. Well, maybe not in those words. Well, sex is a pretty big subject, man. I mean, you think there was something you didn't know about it? There's also a scene where he finds a, a magazine, dirty magazine that he's been looking at. Boy, that A.J. ain't supposed to know as much as he wants me to think he knows. Well, maybe he doesn't consider you an authority on sex. Oh? Yeah, hell. The dirty little bugger with the porno mag. He's as bad as you feel. <laughs> oh, my. You cheeky bugger bones. And this mixture of family life and being a tough cop, it kind of reminds me a lot of the Alex Cross books. Them novels that John Patterson writes. So he must have based his character on Virgil Tibbs, who's also a black character. There's also some violence in this film. You see some guy get his um, head blown off, and you see the blood on the back of his head, people getting beaten up. There's a familiar character as well in this film. Um, the boss, who was in Starsky and Hutch. He pops up in this. Hey, I knew I'd seen that fat bugger somewhere. Bloody Huggy Bear will pop up next. <laughs> the film does have an abrupt ending though. Some of the bad guys get shot and they're from a distance of being assassinated. So it kind of gives you the impression that there's an unseen force that 
you can't get away from them. And it kind of insinuates that there was going to be another film after this. But unfortunately, this was the last film in the trilogy. Although this was the final film in the trilogy, Virgil Tibbs would return. In 1988, a popular TV show called In the Heat of the Night was made. This lasted from 1988 to 1995. It lasted seven seasons, 142 episodes and four TV movies. So overall I thought this film wasn't as bad as the review say it was. Though I was surprised that there was a bit more action in this film than the previous one. It's always great to see Sidney Poitier and a bit of violence as well which was surprising and some good car chase scenes. However, although I enjoyed it, it wasn't a great film. It was just your average type of action film. But if you like the character of Virgil Tibbs, you will probably get some entertainment from this film. So, out of 10, I'd give this one a 7. 7 out of 10. Better than I expected. But did you think for once you like it? I thought it was a load of bloody rubbish, Phil. Get snout. It's not that bad, Bones. You can't beat them Dirty Harry movies. They're the best cop movies. So anyway, I've reviewed all three of the Virgil Tibbs films now. So I'll read them. In third place, I've got the Call Me Mr. Tibbs from 1970. The problem with this film is it looks like a TV movie. It's cheap, although Martin Landau is really good in it. But overall, I'd put it in third place. They call me Mr. Tibbs. In the heat of the night, Virgil Tibbs got the killer. In his new movie, he's not sure he wants to. Sidney Poitier, Martin Landau, in... They call me Mr. Tibbs. In second place, just above it, is the organization from 1971. Very close between these two films, but with the organization having a little bit more action, it gives it a slight edge. The organization, it's so powerful, nothing can stop it. But there's one rebel cop who's gonna try. The organization may or may not know who you are, but they damn well know who I am. And if I'm gonna take them on, plus the department too, I don't wanna be depending on six dead amateurs. <laughs> However, in first place is the award winning In the Heat of the Night from 1967. In this, Sidney Poitier and Rod Steiger give excellent performances. I got him. Where's my husband? I thought I told you to get the hell out of here. You aren't taking me anywhere, you dig? You go get yourself killed. I'm a police officer. Look, they pay you $162.39 a week just to look at bodies. Why can't you look at this one? Why can't you look at it for yourself? I do not want that Negro officer taken off this case. So Sidney Poitier made quite a lot of good films. The uh, ones that I haven't reviewed yet on the channel are Guess Who's Coming for Dinner in 1967. The Defiant Ones in 1958, that should be a good one, it's also got Tony Curtis in. And Lilies of the Failed from 1963, in which Sidney Poitier won an Academy Award. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the review, like, subscribe and share. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye.